Relic and Roycean distributions are frequently used in statistics and its application, for example, in modeling wireless communication systems under fading. However, the Relic fading and the Roycean fading find strong analogy in cricket among other sports. Let us find out how. Consider a cricket pitch and let us set axes for reference. These are x axis and y axis. Now assume that a left handed bowler is bowling over the wicket. In order to get a wicket, he would target the present origin of x and y axis. In doing so, he would bring bold leg before wicket or caught behind into play with high probability. Hence, in the pitch map, we do not have any dominant area and the bowler would relentlessly try to pitch in this point with certain accuracy. At this point we can say how accurate the left hand over the wicket fast bowler is by mapping the probability density function that is the PDF of balls pitched along x axis and along y axis. You can observe that most balls are accurate pointing to a bell opening or maximum point at value 0. However, there is dispersion or standard deviation from the mean value of 0 as well. In fact, both x and y axis are Gaussian distributed. But we can have an alternate form of analysis in which we can calculate the magnitude and the phase. That is, for x and y random variables, we can compute the magnitude and phase angle for each ball pitched. That is, we can have the following relations. For magnitude, we have r which is equivalent to the square root of x square plus y square. And for phase angle, that is theta, we have 10 inverse y by x. Now, if x and y or Gaussian distributed as in our case, then the magnitude has a relic distribution. That is, it is having a PDF which is given by this expression. Where r is the random variable, sigma is the standard deviation. Now plotting the PDF with respect to the positive values of r, we have the following plot. Note that the phase angle is uniformly distributed from 0 to 2 pi. Now, how does this link with the communication system? For that, consider a downlink communication system where a base station is transmitting a message to user in an urban environment. In the given scenario, the user is not having a direct line of sight with the transmitter, but still it gets coverage. The coverage is from multipass where signals are reflected from mountains, houses, and other obstacles before reaching the user. That is, there is no dominant path between the user and the base station. This is similar to the non-dominant pitch map discussed earlier. Herein, the received signal at the user in time index i is denoted as gi, which is an accumulation of gains from all subroutes. The accumulation is referred to as channel h which is multiplied by the symbol, the transmitted symbol S and we have an additive noise at the receiver which is simply N pi. Now this channel H is a complex random variable and it has real part and imaginary part. And like the pitch map example, we can have a phasor diagram which includes two axes. But these axes are now in phase or R and quadrature phase or imaginary axis which we can refer to as I. Now since there is no dominant path or line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver, the received signal is equally likely to be in any of the quadrants. That is from one path we may have this signal while from the other path we may have this signal and so on. Now these in phase and quadrature phase are previously mapped to x and y axis in the cricket example and we considered x and y as a Gaussian distributed random variable. 
and therein we refer to relate distribution as a random variable which is the square root of sum of x square and y square which herein are in phase and quadrature phase components so again as before the pdf of relate distribution random variable or is this as in our previous case Note that again looking into the phasor diagram, we can have the instantaneous or as a sum. That is the signal from the first path would be added with the signal from the second path and so on and therein we can have a resultant signal for a given instant which is referred to as or and the phase angle as theta. Now this was about the relay fading. Now for the rise in fading perspective. Consider a right-handed off-spin baller, for example Murli Dharan, who spins the ball big time. The ideal pitch map of Murli Dharan is tilted up and left. Now with this marker, the baller is more likely to get a wicket of a right-handed bat. So for Murli, the pitch map concentration has an offset from the center. Now again, the distribution along x and y axis is Gaussian and it is as follows. Notice that both x and y axis have now a non-zero mean. As before we can have the phase angle as theta which is tan inverse y by x but because of a dominant area in the pitch map the magnitude will now be r that is equivalent to mu r plus the square root of x square plus y square where the mu r represents the mean distance to the centroid that is mu r is equivalent to the square root of mu x square plus mu y square and here in mu x and mu y are the mean values across uh, the random variable which are x and y respectively hence the random variable r is Ricean distributed with the pdf as follows and mathematically it is given by this expression. Herein we have used I0 which is the modified basal function of 0th order and first kind. Note that the leg distribution is a special case of Ricean distribution where mu x is equivalent to mu y is equivalent to 0. Also we often define a k factor in the Ricean fading which is simply mu r squared over 2 sigma square. Now in wireless communication the offset is basically a dominant path usually a line of sight. Now the transmitter and the receiver are in the line of sight. Hence the receiver will receive a stronger signal from the direct path as denoted in this phasor diagram and we would also have some non-dominant signals from indirect paths. Hence the resultant signal again is a sum of the form. If you found this video useful, subscribe to the channel and you may also like the content in the following playlist.